Hey guys, what's up? This is uh, this is the video that's going to be covering some of the common openings concerning concerning the spellbook deck, uh, as as well as the spellbook of fate loop that you can do, and other common plays as well. Uh, this is going to go over the opening play, which requires you to have a spellbook magician or a spellbook of secrets. You run three of each, so you actually have decent odds of having that in your hand, as well as just one other spellbook. Uh, for this example, I'm just going to use Spellbook of Eternity. It doesn't really matter which spellbook you have, um, as long as you have one. So, you're also going to have four other cards in your hand as well, which could be more spellbooks, which is nice. So, the opening play is you activate Spellbook of Secrets, in this case, and you're going to go get your Magician. You're going to normal summon Magician. Magician ha has the same effect, it searches a Spellbook spell card. It's going to search for Master, and of course we have Eternity in our hand, that's why it's important to have two. So we're going to play our Master, and we're going to reveal Eternity to the opponent, and then we're going to copy Secrets. Now Master searches, and you can go get Spellbook of Fate. If you already have a Spellbook of Fate, you go get a Spellbook of Tower. That means Spellbook of Fate was one of your cards in your hand. Maybe it was maybe it was this one right here, the one that we started with. Maybe you had Secrets and, and, and Fate in your hand. In either case, you always search Fate if you don't have it, and if you do have a Fate, you search Tower. That's pretty much the general rule. Um, let's say you didn't have fate. Let's say this is your hand, uh, just to show you what happens. So now you have two spellbooks in the graveyard. You have these two cards in your hand, and you have four other cards in your hand, whatever those might be. Uh, you're gonna then set your spellbook of fate on the field, as well as if you have more traps or uh, any other plays, you might do those as well. And then you end your turn. The spellbook of fate is already live. You can spellbook of fate to banish two to flip a monster face down or face up depending on its original position including your magician so if they don't do anything really dang uh, threatening you can just flip your own magician down when they attack it or if they just end their turn and you can flip it down and then during your turn you can flip it again and now you get an additional search uh, which is going to set off a whole lot of mayhem on your opponent because now you have a spellbook in the graveyard, you have spellbooks in your banish, you have spellbooks in your you got spellbooks in your hand, you're searching more spellbooks, you got all sorts of plays you can make at this point. And even if they do play something threatening, you can still play Fate to banish to flip their monster down. You can stop their play. If they're trying to do, you know, an exceed summon or a synchro summon, you can flip the tuner down or the important, you know, level four one down. Uh, or something of that nature. Uh, this is also, uh, of course, assuming you're going first, you also can't really MST this. I mean, you can. If you MST it, we still get to chain it, and you one for one the fade away, and now this is going to get to flip, and you're going to get to search your deck. Um, it's just a very strong play to have, and it's very consistent to draw that. Um, you probably draw that, you know, 9 out of 10 games, opening hand. Of course, it does run into some problems if they have Effect Veiler or if they went first and set Solemn Warning or something of that nature. Um, but the, even then, it could all, it could not be that bad if you had a really good opening hand, if you had more than just two spellbooks in your hand. Um, the reason why you can ha open with Spellbook of Secrets or Magician, in that case we opened Spellbook of Secrets, and I said we opened Eternity. If you had opened Magician and Eternity instead, you can normal summon Magician to search for secrets, and then see you're at the exact same place you play Master, reveal Eternity, go get the Fate, and now these are in your hand, you set the Fate, and you have the same exact play, because these do the exact same thing. They search, one searches the other, and then you summon the Magician, and then you search the Master, and if you already have Master, you don't have to search Master, because you already have it. Let's say your opening hand, for example, was something like Secrets and Master or Magician and Master, They're, it's really the same thing to say those two. Uh, then you would play Secrets for Magician. Now Magician doesn't have to search Master, now Magician can search the Fate. You can Master reveal the Fate to go get the Tower. And there's that opening play that we mentioned before, where you had the, the Tower and the Fate. Um, also, whenever you uh, banish the two for the Tower, either to play defense on their creature or to flip your creature down, your Public of Eternity is now live. You can get another Secrets to go search your deck again. Um, so it really does create this sort of easy way to search your deck and toolbox it for whatever spell books you need. The spell book of fate loop, uh, actually before I go over that, I, I, I should go over the tower play as well. Uh, you only want to search tower if you've searched fate already or if you already have fate in your hand. The reason is because you want to have defense turn one. 
I mean, if you already have traps, you can maybe search the tower just because you have like a solemn warning and a trinnel or something like that. But it, in general, you search the fate because you want defense. But let's say that you open with magician and tower plus four cards. So we summon magician, we go get our secrets, we secrets for our master, we master, we reveal the tower in our hand to go search the fate. It's really nice when you can get this opening where you have all three of these. You have two in the graveyard, a magician on the field, a fate, and a tower in hand, which is a very common play. Now you can set the fate, as you did before, but now you also get to play the Spellbook of Tower. And Spellbook of Tower is going to really make your opponent either waste resources or it's going to give you a lot of advantage. Um, again, if they try to make a play, you can fate their card face down or your magician face down, depending on the whatever is best in the scenario. Um, and it, even though you're banishing these, let's say they attacked your magician, so you chain this, flip it down, you banish these spell books. The fate goes to the graveyard, the magician flips. Now you can go search your deck for eternity or another secret or something, and you have a magician in the graveyard, which means your tower is still alive. Your next turn, you're going to put that on the bottom of your deck and you're going to draw again, unless they MSC it. And if they MSC it, well, you just got rid of one of their MSCs. Now let's, you know, you can recycle your cards and you can gain a lot of advantage off the scenario in that case as well. The Fate Loop, which is another big play of this, is that you, the whole idea is that you turn one, you can do this play where you get, you get that, you get secrets for Master, you reveal something, let's just say you reveal Tower, um, and then you search for Fate, right? So that's your hand. And then you set Fate. So this is the first turn, and we, we in this scenario, we said we had Tower. Um, and this is turn one. So turn one, you already have a Fate play. Granted, you're not going to get to banish for three and remove a card on their field, but you are getting to like get more resources or to stop their power play. So it's still good. But this is the turn one fate. Um, and so let's say they attacked it, which is the most common route. Uh, it, it flips, and you can go search your deck for eternity. So then now you have eternity tower. You also have other cards that we're not taking into consideration. This is just the bare minimum. Um, and you, you would have banished these. And now it's your turn. And if we have tower there, they're going to MSC it, or you're going to get to put the fate back and draw a card. Um, it's, it's really an ideal play to have the tower. So, you know, let's say they MSC it. They chain to it and MSC it. Now you, you miss the timing, which is one of the problems with tower. You can miss the timing to summon. It kind of sucks. But, you know, it's, it's just whatever. It's still one for one, and you can get it back real easy. So now we have a fate in the graveyard, and we put eternity back in our hand, remember? So now we're going to play eternity. We're going to get the master. Uh, if you have another spellbook in your hand, let's say you had, um, for the sake of the lesson here, let's just say you had a spellbook of wisdom in your hand as well, and you played eternity to get back the master. Um, if you have a monster, you can... Play, you can summon the monster to activate master, you have to control a spellcaster. If you don't control a monster, let me backtrack this just a little bit, then you search the secrets. You need to have a spellcaster to get the master though. So let's say you don't because you don't have one on the field. If you have another magician in your hand or a breaker, you know, summon that first and see if you have it or not. Then you play the secrets. Secrets can go search your deck. You already have a wisdom, we said, for fate. And so now, looky there, we have a fate play. We have four in the graveyard. And what's really nice about this is that when we fate this time, you can banish the other fate. So now this fate goes out of play, plus, you know, whatever else you banish. It doesn't really matter. This fate goes to the graveyard now, and now this fate is in the banished. So now you have one in the banished and one in the graveyard. And later in the game, you can, you can search your deck for eternity to get this fate. And now this fate plays, and it banishes this fate. And then you get an eternity back. At this point, you need to have a spellbook of tower in order to continue the loop because both eternities at this point are in the graveyard. You can either use master to copy eternity and then get a fate back, or if you use spellbook of tower the fate, the, the the eternity back, then you can search the eternity again and get the fate again. Uh, so tower does help make the loop go a little bit further, but on its own, you can loop about two to four times, uh, depending on how well your hand is. Two eternities and then two to three masters. You can, you can do it that many times, plus however many times your tower puts the eternity back into the deck. Um, 
So that's the Fate Loop. It's a very, very powerful control tool that the spellbooks have uh, at their disposal. The other big play with Master um, is just involving the uh, spellbook of power in Spellbook of Master. Um, it's really difficult to really get around that. Um, I think it's over here. I'm having problems finding my powers. There they are. Uh, so because you can play Spellbook of Power and then you can play Spellbook of Master copying your power and whatever you're putting that on just gain 2,000 attack. So a magician has 2,500 attack at that point. That is humongous considering this search for one of these anyway. It's not hard to get that combo off. And now this, even even if this rams, you know, let's say, I don't know, you heavy thorn and they, they had Sardis. Sardis Road, they have Sardis Dragon. You can power, master copy power, ram Sardis, search your deck for two spellbook cards, and then continue your turn from there. Um, if you don't have that, you know, 2500, generally you're gonna run over whatever they have, but even if you ram, you still get the search. Um, this is a very useful tool to run over cards that your opponent has. The last thing I want to point out is you need to be a little bit careful if you're running this deck, and if you're not going to run this deck, this is something to keep in mind as far as things that make the, that are hard for the deck to handle. Uh, the two hardest things for for spellbooks to really deal with is Thunder King uh, because he blocks all the searching from your deck, and Forbidden Lance hurts a lot as well. Uh, Forbidden Lance, you know, makes it spells and traps don't your monsters are unaffected by them, and a lot of your plays involve you activating Spellbook of Power and even maybe copying Master to copy Spellbook of Power again, like I just mentioned, to try to swing over something big. And when they activate Forbidden Lance, not only do you lose the 2,000 that you just gained, you also lose 800 more attack. So your Magician has zero attack now, or your Breaker only has 1,100 attack now, when you thought he had 3,900, or something like that. And so you end up going like minus two or so, uh, thinking that you could push through uh, because Spellbook of Wisdom won't save you from that because if you change Spellbook of Wisdom to the Lance you're going to have to call spells and you negate them yourself rather than the Lance and so um, Spellbook, Spell, uh, Forbidden Lance and Thunder King Ryo really are kind of difficult for the deck to handle. you got to really read Forbidden Lances in matchups that run it like Fire, Fire Fist and as far as Thunder King you just got to happen to have one of your outs but anyway, that's that's the uh, this is the video over the basic strategies. Hope you learned something.